Hello everyone and welcome back to part development in Kerbal Space Program currently in 1.4.3 and in this episode I do have a new part to show you and it's an another variant on the heat shield, it's the docking heat shield uh, though I decided to implement it in a slightly different way than I originally imagined but first I wanted to show that I've fixed the previous parts that I made uh, now the nozzles of the wraparound service module look proper though there's still a seam here for some reason that I'm gonna have to look at but uh, for the most part I consider this uh, this is on the back burner as far as further details are concerned like I might want to figure out something with the top to make it less plain and obviously the sides look a little bit flat and might need a bump map or something uh, you know those those sorts of things I'm going to leave for later uh, I'm mainly dealing with functionality and the basics here and uh, somebody had asked whether I was going to do a tutorial on how to make stuff, uh, especially, I think, engines was the question. And I would say, let me first stop derping, you know, like uh, not having my normals on the wrong side, you know, weird transparency issues. Uh, part of this is just me not messing up. And once I stop messing up, uh, there will be part of a tutorial a series, I guess, and I'll, I'll show you how I do all the steps there. But first... Let me make sure I'm getting all the steps right. That would be a good start. So uh, fix this up and of course uh, commenters were kind enough to mention the normals. And so now um, there isn't any transparency inside here. And uh, looking in uh, it looks solid. So it's not transparent in there. Though again, lots of work to do on the textures. These are basically placeholder textures right now. So yeah, but... but uh, Functionally speaking, uh, things are looking up here, and uh, today we have a new heat shield, and so let's bring out the capsule, and this is a heat shield with a docking compartment is what I decided to call it. Now, got a, sort of an interesting shape to it. There, uh, it sort of got an edge there to accommodate the the heat shield, the the little um, docking compartment flaps. You can put anything in here, it's a uh, it's, uh, cargo bay basically. And actually what we'll do is we'll test it using the goo containers because um, the docking ports actually have pretty high heat tolerance. They have 2000 Kelvin. The, the what you call it, goo containers only have 1200 and I think they're the most sensitive part to temperature. temperature. So yeah, we do have to tuck them in a little bit. But uh, before I put those in, let me just show you how the docking arrangement works. Uh, obviously, fitting the uh, docking port junior is easy. No, not that way around, though. And you'll note that uh, defaults to being open. That's helpful. Fitting in the docking port, the regular size docking port, is a little bit trickier. You actually have to tweak it up a little bit uh, just so that the lip of it uh, matches the edge of the heat shield then it'll close right so close and it looks like that now I don't know if there's the texture I want obviously these are heat tiles here and then there's the ablator on the outside there I don't know if that's the arrangement I necessarily will stick with or whether I'll just put a blazer on these anyway but this is what I've got right now uh, it doesn't quite match the edge of the capsule and that's because it's actually made more for the realism overall stuff. That's another question somebody had asked. Uh, am I going to make realism overall configs for all, for these things? And the answer is yes to all. Uh, the purpose of these is to use them in realism overhaul for Mars missions. That's the goal. But I want to make sure they work in stock first. Uh, just that I have that requirement that I think they should work in stock. So, so yeah, uh, this is the idea. So the idea is, of course, it starts open, they dock to it. Basically, it's supposed to work with the wraparound service module, right? So you've got uh, it all pre-docked already. We need, I need to figure out how to make shrouds, though. I haven't figured that out. Uh, but the uh, wraparound service module is here. And I guess for now, we can just tweak it up. But so what, what you can envision happening is... Um, in here we'll have another docking port. Uh, actually, let's make it a junior one. I hate that they have these sort of sleeves on them. You know, that part. I don't know why that is. I hope it doesn't have a collider. I would suppose not. 
and then what it means is that now the Kerbals can go straight on through into the lander without having to redock. And that's handy if we have a heat shield, of course, at the bottom, which this is this arrangement is intended to have, you know, so you're going to have some sort of heat shield down there. And so they can use the space inside as more living space. And that's super important for a Mars mission, as you might imagine. Okay, anyway, so that's the logic behind it. But the question is, does this really shield what's in there? In other words, when you launch it and we come back down, is the thing inside going to blow up or not? Because I don't know that yet. I have not tried it out. This is the testing. And we are going to find out together with the goo containers. I've sort of tried to configure it as a cargo bay. And I copied the parameters from the Mark III cargo bay, except I uh, it had a diameter parameter and I sized that smaller to 1.5 meters. I don't know if that's good or not. I assume that 1.25 meters is about right, so 1.5 should cover it and not go too far overboard. And I told it where the nodes were for the cargo bay, but yep, yeah, we'll see. Really, when you get down to it, there are a lot of things that need to be tested with this, including making sure that the colliders inside the cargo bay are clean so that things that are in there can decouple off of it. Though, I don't think you really want to have a decoupling situation. Uh, that The cargo bay inside the heat shield is not quite like the wraparound service module in that there's not that much space. I've made the colliders so that it shouldn't collide with anything, um, but still. The flaps are a little bit iffy though, because they're sort of curved and the colliders have to be uh, convex. So that, that one's uh, not quite in line with the mesh. All right, so here we go. We're going to launch Valentina into a relatively high orbit. We've got 4,900 meters per second in total. So we're going to try for a uh, Minmus-like orbit again. So again, there are goo containers in there. I've moved the decoupler up to sort of mask the gap, but I still don't have a shroud on, on the heat shield. I need to figure out how to do that. My first guess as to how to do that did not work out. And a lot of the parts that I'm looking to work on are, are Mars-related parts for Mars missions. That is my basic focus. One thing I was looking at and I've started modeling is the kilowatt reactor from from NASA. It's called Krusty, which also endeared me to it. So I've started modeling Krusty and it's uh, radiators which fold out. And this sort of the animation for the radiators folding out is very similar to this sort of cargo bay thing. So I think I'm all right with it. The kilowatt nuclear reactor is more important for moon missions, of course, because the moon has 18 day nights. Whereas the Mars cycle is more in line with Earth's, though, still with Mars, because it's further away, the solar power isn't the greatest thing. Now, inside here, the flaps are still open. You can sort of see there and the goo containers are exposed. So one question I have is you can see the flaps are sort of interacting with the decoupler here and I'm wondering whether that's going to cause an explosion or not when I decouple. We will find out. Yeah a lot of this part development is just me figuring out whether some of the ideas I have will actually work because people haven't really done too much of these things like the wraparound service module idea. You know and it turns out that that would work, but the question is, would it work? I mean, would, can you have a little heat shield that has a little compartment that's shielded? That's sort of important information. In theory, of course, with the cargo bays we already have, the answer is yes, right? And that's, that's all nice in theory, but we have to check. So we'll dip it back down. Okay, that'll do 24 kilometers. Again, it has half the ablator that the normal 2.5 meter heat shield would have. Make sure that that's... Yep, okay, well, let's see about the decoupling. Ooh, it knocked us a bit. 
It knocked us a bit. That was a bit awkward, obviously. Let's let's uh, observe one of the mystery goos. Let's say, okay, keep. And now let's close this. We've got tile on the inside as well. That's not exactly right, but anyway, retrograde. Mars heat shield is sort of pointier than the curved Earth heat shields. They're even more pointier than this. They're more conic. If you've seen the rovers and all. In this case, this is pointy mainly because I wanted to give some space to make sure that the stuff inside was all right. But uh, design-wise, maybe I would like it to refine the shape a little bit better. I wouldn't say this is my favorite shape right now. Looks like a flying saucer attached to the butt end of this. Okay, here we go. That's your glowing red, huh? Makes me wonder if I've got some number wrong, you know? Huh. Now that's really interesting. And those are the two goo containers, are they? See, now this is why we test things. Uh, yeah, I think they're the... Well, they're not just the goo containers, huh? So it doesn't look like they're, like, in dangerous territory or anything. It's interesting, the shape of this, isn't it? It's very focused on the flap area. Not so much on the rest of the heat shield area. The whole thing has colliders. I'll show you in the VAB. Maybe it's because I specified that the cargo bay was 1.5 meters in diameter and it's only looking at this 1.5 meters or something. Well, the capsule is out of heating, so that's good. A little bit of the capsule is sort of poking out over the edge of the heat shield. Now, in this case, we would want to bring the goo containers back, presumably, but landing on a pointy thing like this isn't the greatest. Uh, maybe for now, I'll just jettison the heat shield. Ah, now that doesn't work. Maybe we should have the parachutes out before I do that. But at least that, it seems to be able to separate just fine. Uh, we have some mountains. Okay, once the parachute deploys, the heat shield does fall away and explode properly. And everything else is fine. A little bit quirky, but the goo containers didn't explode, so maybe it's all right. Once again, the real test will be realism overhaul. Blop. All right. In theory, everything I make should have surface attachability, and so if we put a RCS port here, you can see it attaches like that. All right. So there's there is a collider all around, and of course inside the bay. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to attach the mystery goo like that. And also on the flaps, you can see this is attaching to the flap, not to the heat shield. I know I don't have a little hinge between the flaps and the rest of the heat shield. I really need to make that. That's one of those details that I want to add later. But interestingly, if you add this to the flap, even though the collider is parented to the flap and not to the rest of the thing, um, when you close it, it doesn't go along with that. I'm not entirely sure how to make sure to get parts attached to the collider to go along with it. I don't know, it's weird. You can see the collider is still there. The collider, the collider itself went with the flap. You can see that collider is there. If I open and I try and replace this, this now doesn't have anything to attach to unless it's inside the bay. So the collider is going along with it, it's just that things attached to the collider don't go along with it. Hmm. Anyway, so this is the new development from the Elegant Design Bureau. The heat shield with a docking bay compartment, or whatever you want to put inside of it. And that was the idea. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.